Hello everyone and welcome to the Join Dota League Division 1 for Asia Season 2. We are bringing you Mythtrust vs. Minsky. My name is Roxas and with me once again is Don Horatio. Dire team yep, happy to be here once again. Nice early morning Dota game once again and it's uh, always fun to be here. Mythtrust, once again, going to be the team we will be watching. But they'll be up against, uh, yeah, up against Mineski today and Mineski is a bit of a confusing team. Um, definitely Pinoy pride strong with these guys, but it's these guys on the on their best days they can beat just about anybody, but they have been remarkably inconsistent. But a lot of stronger finishes in the last couple of months. Um, even taking some games off of teams like Titan and stuff like that, but they can also lose just about anybody. It's gonna be interesting to see which Mineski team does come out of the gates today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, some team. I think consistency is just like the hardest thing to have in a Dota team. Not only with whatever heroes you're comfortable with all playing, what heroes are strong in the meta, like things that are outside of your control, but also when things go awry, we all have emotions. None of us are just robots that play Dota completely free of our feelings as humans for each other. And working as a team can be hard. And uh, consistently. And the top teams is usually why we see them in the top teams, but pretty difficult for those reasons. But looking at the picks and bans, we saw a Viper first ban, which I found a bit peculiar, but the Lycan, Bat, Naga all going to be banned out. Mythtrust going to first pick the Centaur, Five, and then Mineski going to go ahead and respond with the Invoker and Ancient Apparition. Yep, um, I mean, in the, there was a game right before this that Mineski was playing, just before jumping into this one, and they were playing a Viper in that game. Maybe Mythtrust was watching. I don't know. I guess so. so. Maybe, but yeah, the Centaur, a strong first pick still. The off lane, not quite as easy with the mana reduction on Hoof Stomp, but as long as you don't find yourself in troublesome situations, it's not really that big of a deal to have it lowered a little bit. You can still survive pretty well for the most part and get your levels, so it doesn't make a huge difference. And Ember Spirit will be picked up with Mythtrust's second pick. Ember Spirit's so good with Centaur really Warrunner as well. Man. Just stampede damage on everyone during one slate of fist is really really hard to deal with. Um, he is obviously not nearly as strong as he used to be. We even saw in the game yesterday, well, who was that that was with the Wraith King Dazzle against the Coddle P.L.? Uh, Maruchan. Maruchan and... and THD at that system. Yeah, that was it, in THD. And we see that Ember Spirit, in a lot of circumstances during the mid game, where Slate of Fist is usually very strong and he can have a lot of burst, a lot earlier than most heroes. There were a lot of heroes that got away with very low HP, which all would have been kills in the previous patch. And because of that, he didn't get nearly as much money as he used to, and he kind of fell off a bit, because he wasn't able to get a Battle Fury. He was just kind of stuck on phase drums and poor man's shield, which you used to be able to get a lot of mileage out of, Ten and not so much anymore. Remaining. Yep, a little bit weaker. I don't know. That was a, it was a tough Five game for him in the last remaining. one, all that push coming in. But the hero, with a good start, is still pretty good. Radiant still that same... Check. Annoying, just absolute splash damage disaster if he gets a couple of Battle Furies up and you just don't want to have to push into that if it gets to that point. So, Mineski's yeah. going to go for the Tree and Protector. Two strong supports. Team and Overgrowth is a nice little nice little uh, lead into maybe an Ice Blast and then an Invoker combo of some kind. So, this hero's seen a lot of play recently and I think it's a pretty smart pickup here for Mineski. Yeah, I think X Ordered Invoker is definitely going to be the way to go this game. Because with the Ancient Apparition and the Tree and Protector, two global abilities, adding a Sunstrike onto that's going to be great. Not to mention Forge Spirits to take off the charges of Flame Guard and also to harass Ember Spirit out in the lane is going to be really Ten powerful. Not to mention, um, if anyone is being Stampede, like, remaining. if Stampede is being used defensively, uh, Cold Snap is going to be a great way to impede them as well Reserve as time. a Deafening Blast gives a lot of damage. So I think that they'll probably go Exort here. That's my speculation. Yeah, Team Global. Team Global. Could be strong. We'll see, but... Another good pickup there, if they are going to go full Global, will probably be a Spectre. Yeah, definitely. They could They could certainly do that. It's not the greatest pairing with Ancient Apparition in the lane. Um, same thing with Tree and Protector, but Tree and Protector with Chilling Touch Punches, I guess, is... I mean, who's who's good with Spectre in the lane? Like, what laning presence does she have? Well, I, I meant, no, I meant, the, I meant the, like, the other way around, as far as, like, trying to... Go with Ancient Apparition. Just trying to fit a bit better. Sam King going to make his way into the game yet again. This is a hero that we've seen a, a lot of. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll reiterate the same reasons. It's just Sam King can go off on his own and farm the jungle, which means that Myth Trust is going to get more experience out of the map by having less experience shared in lane. Not to mention, he really only needs 
the heroes that are really popular right now, Centaur, Batrider, Sand King, uh, even Earthshaker to a degree, most of the heroes three. that are popular are the ones that have one item and go, and they pretty much have their Five whole toolkit that they need, and Sand King is one of those who, as a support as well, has a lot more money than you're used to time. having on a support, just because of being able to derude the jungle. Yep. And uh, they could maybe pair him. You can jungle with him. You can also maybe roam around with him. There's a shadow. No, a shadow demon was banned out. Never mind. So that would be the best pairing for him. But if you want to run around with him, but it's not going to be quite as easy as at this game. But as far as other setups go, to maybe roam around with, not a whole lot, but still plenty of decent lane supports as well. But may not be able to get a whole lot of impact early on. Until, like, I think uh, HP in the jungle for a bit. I think Ventral Spears would be a very good pickup for Myth Trust here. Very powerful on the dire side with Vengeance Ore, especially so he gets a medallion early. Good setup for Sand King and also a very strong laner. So I think that could work out. I think uh, that's, that, that would be my pick. It would be a Ventral Spirit. Yeah, they got a couple other options too, but uh, well, let's see what they do go for. Mineski looking for two more core heroes to pair up with Timber their... Timbersaw's in the pool. Yep, two strength heroes uh, that they're up against, which... Could work out. There's a lot of stuns, but uh, Timbersaw, I mean, he's still... With Living Armor, he's very hard to bring yeah. down. If you have Living I, Armor I, and Reactive Armor... Yeah, I think I think that pick does sound like potential, but they'll go for an HS Profit and oh, Team Dyer Global. Team, team Global, so... Spectre would seem to be the hero that would probably fit the best as the carry in this lineup, and it, it definitely will be an Exhort Invoker. Well, maybe definitely. You told me to stop doing that. It probably will be an Exhort Invoker. <laughs> Yeah, the, chan the chances are definitely strong that it will be. It's you don't you don't really go for a lineup like this without wanting to get the full, the full effect of a global and sun strikes. Well, it's about as much damage as you can dish out on a global. What's what I'm looking for? Five seconds. Whatever. Remaining. Having a global presence. So cool. to just deal a ton of damage to a single target. So myth trusts are taking some time here. They don't. Time. I don't think they necessarily want to pick up their carry. Because they will get the last pick, so they could completely counterpick the carrier if they would want to. So they're probably going to pick up their second support here. Probably something that pairs well with a Sand King. Uh, most of the ones that we see are AA which, and Dazzle, which are both banned out. Um, what else? It's really hard to think of heroes whenever you don't actually have the hero list to like look at. It's going to be Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi. That, Ogre Magi would be good. You know, two short-range melee Or supports. melee heroes. Uh, Bielich. Okay. Okay, Lich, that's really good. If they also choose to... You can do a dual lane, Lich, in the mid or the off lane. And then also you can pick up a hero, maybe like Weaver or something like that, that can solo his lane pretty easily. When Sand King goes to the jungle, then he all of a sudden gets a lot of experience. Uh, but if Mythtrust decided to do a dual lane mid with the Ember or a dual lane off lane with the Centaur, it, all of a sudden that hero is going to have a lot more experience and a lot easier time because the Endless Frost Blast is really difficult to deal with if you're going to be from Mineski here. Yeah, Mithra showed yesterday that they do value this hero a lot, Ten so even picking it up with a... I believe it was them who picked it up with the first pick. Um, so, not surprising remaining. to see them pick it up. Did kind of skip our minds there for a bit, but... Yeah, absolutely. Could be a sense. Um, Rubik could be banned out as well as the Weaver, so there's... I think it's a smart band as far as the core is concerned. It's a here that goes up well against Nature's Profit 1v1. It's, it's also insane. incredibly good with Ancient Apparition and Tree and Protector. True. Uh, so. That lane is really difficult. Almost no one stands up to it. Uh, Mineski, interestingly enough, did think that Sand King is a core because they did ban out the Rubik, faceless but void. it's going to be a Faceless Void. I was thinking that could have been a really good pairing as well. Anyone Probably. that's caught in Chronosphere is instantly dead. If any of those global abilities are off cooldown, even Ice Blast and Wrath of Nature can do very well. Uh, Faceless Void's laning presence is usually some, it leaves something to be desired, but Living Armor definitely makes up for that. Also, if he gets the Chilling Touch and all of a sudden just gets a Lucky Bash on the offlaner, they're at half health because of the two subsequent... He already right-clicks very hard, Yeah, Ancient Apparition on top of that is going to make it... Really Five difficult. Pretty, pretty dirty. He also turns really fast now. So he has so the highest turn rate in the game, man. With Shadow He's Fiend and Bat. Time. He spins. He spins around. It's spins around. So, really good pickup here. And Faceless Void also, incredibly good late game. We've seen Aghanim Scepter be kind of the go-to item for him just because a 60 Ten second cooldown on Chronosphere means that anyone you see, you kill. And you don't have to think, oh well, I used my ultimate to secure a solo kill. It's always good and it's always okay. And it's going to be a clinks coming up. So, Faceless Void Mantis style coming in. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's, uh, 
I've seen this clinks a couple times in recent games, and I mean, it'll be... He can find pickoffs with this, to be sure. Yeah, the Orchid will help him secure maybe pickoff kills against Invoker, Ancient Prophet. Faceless Void is a bit of a tougher pickoff, but the Squirts obviously can fall as well, so... Well, we'll see what Lakels can find, and uh, how efficient... Lakels played an incredible clinks yesterday, was it? Or two days ago? I'm trying to remember who... Or no, that was uh, Hannah. I think it's That's another team who clinks. had... Yeah. yeah. Um, but, well, maybe he learned something. Who knows? But, uh, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, we'll see. And, uh, I need to figure out who these players are on Mineski, because I was trying to figure this out last night. I don't watch a whole lot of Mineski, and they changed their nicknames a lot, even like with the whole new Five name thing that Volvo eight. put in. It's still ridiculously hard to figure out who's... I'm who's not, I know I have like, their names brought up, and I instantly forgot them. What a player. I, I, I'm a fire, fire Roxas. Right, let's see, so Owa, that's fine. So Owa, Jesse, Vash, and... God. Let's see. Steam profile. Oh, <laughs> private profile. Private right. profile? Wrecked. So it's... Giora Omelette, Calvin Bloody. Okay, Jules, one, two, three. Jay. Okay, so Jesse Bash, Owa. One, two, three is Geo. Um, ASXC is. I have no idea. I guess we'll just call him that. And uh, the. Bogus. I mean, they, if they don't want to be called by that name, then they obviously wouldn't have used it in game. Oh my God, that's not that's not even true. <laughs> Oh, one, of, one of my favorite nine, things. Surprise. <laughs> one of my favorite things was um, whenever Admiral Bulldog would change his name based on who he was playing against. So against Fnatic, it would be Admiral Nodong. Um, also works against Team Liquid. Uh, against Team Liquid, I forgot. Oh, and uh, against Empire, that he it was like Star Wars. It was like R two Dong two. I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, and against Team Liquid, oh, yeah, he, he took the dong off because of Bulba. Oh, it's Jay Invoker. Okay, I should just read the name above his, above him and not on the scoreboard. Okay, so that makes sense. All right. Cool. Wow, Mineski currently 4-0 in the current patch with AA. So, go to here. No reason they picked, picked it up in the first phase. But speaking of Mineski, let's go ahead and introduce him. Going mid lane on the Invoker, we're going to have Jay. It looks like he will be going Quas Exort starting with the Null Talisman. Going in the safe lane, it looks like, as the Nature's Prophet, we'll have Jesse Vash. In the aggressive tri lane, we're going to have Oa. On the Ancient Apparition, we have ASXC playing the carry Faceless Void. And on the Tree and Protector, we're going to have 1 2 3 1 2 3. Yeah, and well, I'll, I'll come on that aggressive tri lane in a minute. But uh, on the side of Mythros, taking up the reins in the Lich, we do have TNK. On Sand King, Boom Bell making his glorious return on this hero. Ember Spear can be taken up by ABBA. Centaur, played by KYT. And last but not least, Lakel's star player of this team, taking up the Clinks. 30 seconds to battle. And, man, usually you'd think, like, there's a void in the game. The aggressive trial can be against him. I guess they're just trying to dodge here. Because, or he just doesn't want to deal with the Centaur. Centaur's just a pain in the ass against uh, strength carries. I mean, sorry, not strength carries, uh, melee carries. Oh, absolutely. And also... Double Edge just does a lot of damage unless you somehow backtrack it. And Void has a pretty low HP pool to begin with. Dude, and just what's his it. strength gain? His strength gain is only 1.6, so. Just backtrack. It's just, <laughs> you gotta be more skilled to backtrack. Exactly. Well, at least if they do do this, uh, it will keep Sanking out of the jungle, maybe. But I still think that a Clink's dual lane, or even a Clink's solo lane, can deal with this tri lane pretty easily. It's going to rely mostly on the living armor coming out from Tree and Protector to make sure that Void has a sustain in lane that he kind of lacks in general. Um, Lich did go in the mid lane, just sacrificed a creep, so it looks like he'll be going top as well. And What the hell is he wearing, man? Is he wearing a dress? I don't know, man. <laughs> he looks like Aladdin. He looks, he looks good. He looks good. He, does, he looks pretty good. Well, okay. Center turns pulls pull some creeps around bottom lane, um, going for the big old pull your opponent's creeps into the jungle action, so. And he gets stomped. Stomps him right guy. back. Oh, oh Clinks. They do oh, have a dust for him. Chilling touch as well. Oh my god, the lead seed. Do they have the punch? The tree the punch. punch. What? Oh, but the burn strike oh, comes in. No. He's under the tower now. He's going to be first blood. Easiest yeah. first blood of his life. Easiest first. Sun strike? Sun strike. Oh, he That's salved. Salve. That's salve. Level one so sun close. strike. Oh my oh, god. Oh, the tree. One more punch. Nice burn strike from Boom Bell, securing the first blood and saving his uh, teammate's life there. Nicely played. 
Yep. And also, Boombell does sacrifice the salve to get to Lakels there. Also, interesting observer ward placement. This is never going to be dewarded, but it makes sure they always have vision, and it looks like they're going to be trying to be quite aggressive here. At least they're an aggressive tri on Radiant, so being able to pull from the side camp is a lot easier. Helps your cause, definitely, if the lane is tilting a little bit out of your favor. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they're going to be using that tool right now. Yeah, they're going to try and deny this uh, Clinks the farm. And Clinks is a hero who you pointed out yesterday does need that Orchid. He needs that one item to actually really kick into gear. And the longer it takes to get that, um, helps out. But he may try, might, ah, maybe he's going to try and go on ASXC, but he'll just uh, time walk away. So not going to happen, and they'll go ahead and just take this pull for themselves. Well, in the bottom lane, we didn't really look at that, but Nature's Prophet did pick up a very early Orb of Venom to try to get some more harassment out of the Centaur. Uh, the return damage is obviously going to be pretty difficult whenever Centaur gets his Tranquil Boots. Uh, he can't really harass him out of lane, but what do you think about this uh, ranged Orb of Venom pickup on Nature's Prophet? I'm not a huge fan of the ranged Orb of Venom. It really just doesn't add that much. The damage is pretty much negligible, especially when you're as tanky as a Centaur is, and a slow of 4% isn't going to really do a whole lot for you. I don't know, I just don't think an Anxious Prophet needs... He does okay in this matchup without an Orb of Venom. You don't really need to take this little weird sidetrack to get get it and delays getting an actual item you want to get a bit longer. So, I'm not a huge fan. Fair enough. In the mid lane, as expected, last hits of the nice. Uh Invoker, as an expert, is destroying the Ember Spirit. Um, mm -hmm. Sitting at 14 for 7 against 6 for 1. He's going to have the better damage. He hasn't even invoked any Forge Spirits yet, but as soon as those start happening... Uh, Abba's going to get harassed out of the lane pretty easily, so he's going to be needing some help in rotation, but going to be really aggressive, or difficult, with Mineski running this aggressive tri lane, which I never thought I'd say with a faceless void. Yeah, um, and well, at the end of the day, this aggressive tri lane, I don't know how well it's going to work out. It does force the supports to stay in lane, but I mean, even with Shelling Touch, this Clinks is going to be able to get probably better harass off a of Searing Arrow, is at least more reliable, and get easier last hits as well, but Boombell... Going on He's a mystery going. journey into the side shop. I don't know if that's worked out too well for you, buddy. He will sandstorm up, and he will get taken down by the dust. Well, now TNK, he's in a precarious position as well. Leech Seed off cooldown, but the tree punchers are there, and they're going to be able to secure it. The Klinx is dusted as well, but they are not going to pursue. Going to take their two for nil and back off with it. Yep, and I I don't really know what Boombell was thinking when he uh, wandered right past the Faceless Void, who right-clicked him a couple of times to try and Burrow Strike that guy, and then kind of just died for it. I don't know. Seemed like a bit of a... It's called making plays, Kyle. Dude, well, I mean, he made he made plays for someone, and it wasn't his team right there, so... <laughs> wow. Anyway. Okay. The Tree and Protector wandering towards mid lane. Gonna be trying to get some control on the Ember Spirit. They do know the rune's bottom, so Jesse Bash TPs and takes it. There's actually some pings going out, and it looks like they're gonna try to surround him. Boombell came down here with the smoke. Jesse Bash, he summoned some treants. Those might be able to help him a little bit. They actually do manage to body block. And the Flame Guard, not damage, can't really do anything. Living Armor going to buy him some time. But the Searing Chains are there. The Searing Chains are real. Boom Bell with the right clicks. They're going to be able to kill him with the Flame Guard. Yep, he was being patient. He didn't want to like slide a fist and Searing Chains with all the treants around and maybe catching the wrong hero and not get his disable. So nice job by ABBA, really waiting it out and making sure he did nail the Searing Chains that they needed to to secure that kill. So nicely played. Rotation now coming up for Mineski, and I think this is the right idea. They certain, I think that you were right, they might have been trying to dodge it. Well, San Pete is used, mid lane. They're going to be going on to Invoker, and... Pretty dead. Yeah, when you don't have Wex, it's kind of hard. So, much Pretty needed gank on not him. not going to get a whole lot done here in the rotation, but... Well, get some experience, I guess, okay. but yeah. The, they have thought better of their aggressive tri lane they were doing all right but at the end of the day you want your faceless void free farming if you can and i think you will have a better time down here the clinks does have a lot more room to breathe now but i mean clinks late game versus faceless void late game yeah. is not really a contest yeah, it, it really isn't yeah so. I and mean, clinks has a lot of damage but he can't really do that if he's in chronosphere mm -hmm. so and it looks like there won't be lane switching up uh from myth trust they're just going to leave the lanes the same way Invoker, he's going to be going for a Hand of Midas, as he already picked up the Brown Boots and eaten through his two shared Tangos. So he'll be having that pretty soon. Probably going to go for the Necker Book, especially against the Clinks, who's going to have that consistent invisibility. Going to be core on him, plus it adds a lot of damage to your team. Just works very well on the hero in conjunction with Forge Spirits as well. Uh, pretty much anyone you see, if you have Necker Book and Forge Spirits, they're just going to die to Cold Snaps and Right Clicks. 
Yeah. Well, AVB is grabbed up in his rune. Gonna go ahead and drop a ward in the high ground as well, but... He'll be moving back to mid lane, won't look to gank bomb with that invis. There are a lot of heroes down here, it may not be his best decision if he does. This guy's gank, but... 2-0, but he only has 12 last hits. He's quite poor right now, so they don't really need... Mineski doesn't really need to worry about rotations from Ember Spirit coming anytime soon. And not to mention Clink's... Uh, he, he just needs to stay in lane on farm and work it. Like, that's just the way Clink's is most effectively played, it's tried and true. So Faceless Void has tons of space. Uh, he is... Got a fair bit of gold. Don't know if he's going to go in for a hand of Midas, but I think that if he did, he could get away with it. Yep. And yeah, I think I think for Myth Trust, they really the Centaur needs to get a blank, and he's the one who has to start creating space. And if they want to get kills, he's going to be the one who's really starting it first. I mean, the Orchid will eventually lead to them on Clinks, and Phase Drums on Ember will certainly help out. But he's actually going to come on with this into this. Um, only has a level one searing chain, so only the ones that can disable. So we'll have to see if they can actually get the faceless void here. But leading off with a bomb into a searing chain. Okay, they will get it with a remnant in, so. Killing spree for uh, Ember Spear. Maybe not, may not be getting a ton of last hits, but he's finding the kills. Finding the kills, that's definitely what he needs, though. And I think that they are going to try to feed the kills to him for that reason. I want to point out something interesting. So Clinks, instead of going for an Orchid uh, right away, he's picked up a Soul Ring. And we've seen Eternal Envy do this, where he just picks up a Soul Ring and goes for a Blink Dagger, and just tries to get online really early without the Orca Malevolence, and just uh, pops a Soul Ring for the Strafe and the Arrows as soon as he finds anyone. What do you think about that build? Do you prefer that over the Orchid, or...? Um, I think, I think it has... It has potential. I... Radiance I don't know, Blink's... It's, it's such a weird... It's Bottom lane. Oh. Chronosphere are going to be used on KYT, and Sunstrike to follow up, dead. Power of global, but Clink's soul ring. Bottom tower is under I think attack. the soul ring. I'm, I'm not. I'm not 100 sold on it. But if it is the blink build, I, it's it's all right. I, um, I don't know. Its position is really important in Dota, which is why every team gets four staffs all the time forever because and boots. it's really really good. And blink's pretty good for that as well. Um, I don't know. I just I'm I'm still I'm always gonna be a fan of the fast orchid on this hero. I think, but um, well, let's see if he can sell me on it. Absolutely. Invoker, he, he did finish up that hand of Midas a while ago, sitting at 750 gold. He could go for a four staff right away or start working towards that Necker book. Sand King, though, or Boom Bell, he's going to be farming the jungle, getting actually deceptively close to his Blink Dagger. He's been a bit quiet. He's actually popped a solo smoke and drawn the line to go behind the tower. Yeah, they're looking for this Nature's Prophet. And if he can get behind it and Clinks keeps pressuring this tower and gets some creeps under the tower, uh, it should be a. Decently easy kill on Jesse Bash. Uh, the damage output from a Clinks, even without an Orc, is still pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for a very squishy hero like Nature's Prophet. That's, and, uh. uh yeah. yeah, he goes, uh. Soul Ring Midas. This is definitely the Eternal Envy build. Yep. I do. I. Midas. I do like the Midas. I don't know. They have another hero in Centaur who can be the guy looking to initiate the pickoffs, so you don't need to really get the pickoff item. Stampy Dude's top. Burrow Strike, Trees. Well. Yep, there we go. Look how it's a kill. And, uh, oh, Invoker killing Ember Spirit mid by himself, it looks like. Yeah. Or was that a. That was a Sun Strike. Sun Strike. Back so. there. Okay, yeah, alright. Well. Dyer's middle tower is Invoker definitely here that can solo kill Ember Spirit. Not Radiant whenever he wants to, but pretty damn close to whenever he wants to. It's KYT being gone on bottom lane, Time Walk is used, but Lich is there to give him some Frost Armor, and with the right clicks. Oh! He tried to get him with a double edge, but they managed to clear him down. Lich cleans him up. Boom Bell, gotta take some damage from Wrath of Nature. Gigabyte, he has a living armor, decides to use it on himself, but Jesse Dash, TP then. Sunstrike narrowly misses Boom Bell. Now TNK surrounded by trees. Boom Bell, you're against three heroes, friend. You're gonna be Burrow striking, but I don't know if that's the best idea. Ember Spirit's coming in. He channels the Epicerian. He manages to get it off, actually. And the Searing Chains does hit on two. The Ford Spirit's trying to do a lot of work in ABBA. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Cold, Cold Snap is so good. And actually, Boom Bell's the only one to make it away, minus Lakel's free farming in the top lane. Yep. Uh, nice teleport in by Jesse Bash, uh, helping to clean up there. And uh, it was a shame that the Faceless Void went down. Um, other than other than that, would have been basically a perfect situation. He actually, has a Chrono Sphere up top. He's, I think he's considering going on Lakel's here, but don't know if he can quite get him. No, Ice Blast was just used and uh, was airballed. Oh, that was a that was a bad turn. But anyway. He's not going to be committing to the Chronosphere. He will be going uh, in for a Hand of Midas as well. Uh, he does have the recipe sitting on himself, so he should be able to get 300 gold and get it at the side shop here. Unless Lakelis comes in and is quite aggressive attack. towards him. Not sure. Lich is here. 
Ah, it looks like they won't be able to go on him. But speaking of the hand choice on Clinks, I do like it as well just because, especially with the change to Death Pact, with the cooldown, you can actually farm incredibly quickly and always be on the map. Also, bottom lane, eh, Nature's Guy is able to help him out. Yeah, but yeah. Be like, you, you have an ability for attack speed on Clinks, but even so, having the attack speed from Minus still helps out, so a little additional bonus. Faceless Void right and uh, Clinks both are heroes yeah. with very low base attack speed, so they do genuinely benefit from having the attack speed from the hand of Midas, as opposed to a life stealer that doesn't really need it. And he actually is going to be going for Orchid. He's not going to be going for Blink. So gets a Soul Ring early on for more sustainability. Uh, can you? You can't disassemble a Soul Ring, right? I do not know. You cannot. Okay, th I thought so. So we can't just use that Sobe Mask for. Oh, an Crusher Mill, ABBA going to get a. Whamma blamma, but can they actually finish him off? No, they cannot, and here comes a Chain Frost to... An additional TP in from... Well, KYT, they're using Stampede, they want to pursue this, oh my god, but Searing Arrows is so much, but Living Armor is really good as well, it's a Chilling Touch going to be used, as well as the Cold Feet, and they're going to be slowing him down, but Centaur is quite a tanky man, uh, but yeah, now there's a DD on Ember Spirit, so attack. next time that happens, it's going to be a much swifter turnaround, and... And Booker does yeah, decide yeah. to go for Force Staff first, which I support. Yep. Do you think that is a very good item? Like like I said five minutes ago, positioning is pretty much everything. And even if you're not a Quas Wex Invoker, you don't need to get like the perfect angle, or you don't need to jump forward and nail that Tornado EMP. It's it's still a good item to have. Uh, get yourself out of trouble, get teammates out of trouble, and get yourself in position to land a good XR combo, certainly. And they're going to go ahead and push this Tier 1 bottom. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Epic Center are going to be used. At Oh. And those Sword Spirits <laughs> didn't, those didn't spirits see, didn't see that coming. <laughs> yeah, that, they, are, they are dead. Well, it uh, even shows off the Blink Dagger, too. I'm not sure if he's actually, that's his first time showing it, but... Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I, I mean, yeah. usually uh, when you hit a Blink Dagger on a hero like Puck or Sand King you, or Bat Rider, you get one free kill when you expose your, your Blink Dagger because they're like, oh, well... free kill on Ford Spirits. He has Blink, but you got those Ford Spirits. And as Eric was mentioning, there's a... 79% win rate if Clinks builds a Blink Dagger, so... You think Lukelz might be going for this? I don't know if he can really afford it, because he's going to have to be the only source of damage. Well... Until really does, I don't know. He doesn't really need a... I don't know if he wants to get a Blink. I mean, it's... Bottom lane. Dream Protector was gone on, and the Overgrowth buys him a lot of space, getting away with 13 HP. He does have a sick charge, and... Unfortunately, there was no Remnant out from Spirit. He actually decides to go home. They're already going to have three ki kind of Blink heroes. I mean, Remnant is kind of... It's it's a Blink-ish kind of maneuver, but they will have Blink Centaur Radiant and Blink Sand King as well. Attack. So Clinks doesn't necessarily need to get one. He certainly still can, but... Um, I guess if you're going for more of the solo pick-off sort of thing and split pushing, it's a lot more useful because you can also Blink up strafe... You can strafe a tower, and then as soon as you see that you're in trouble, you just Blink back and Skeletal Walk, and it's very, very difficult to kill you. I don't know, I just think he's going to need fighting items because, or, or sorry, like more later game items, because Blink's nice and all, but it's not going to help you really do damage in a fight or stay alive and things like that And later in the later game. And there's a, three Midas's on the side of Ineski, so he's going to have to be able to contend with these big late game carries. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, Sunstrike almost, oh, Sunstrike Wrath of Nature will actually finish off uh, the Centaur Warrunner, nicely played. Wow. Behind the bot lane, he was pretty low. I saw Ice Blast fishing for him earlier, and well, hey man, Team Global, it's really easy to forget it. Now they know that there was Vision back there as well. Oh, Bird Strike, Blink, Chain Frost committed. Goodness. There's going to be a Force Staff, and never mind, Lich is going to be able to finish off that Dominating Streak with a right click. And in the mid lane, Oa in some trouble, throws a short range Ice Blast. Living Armor going to be buying them some time and space, and not to mention the Sprout from Nature's Prophet. Now he's surrounded. The dive does not trade favorably for him, and it's a one for one, and both mid laners are going down. But Clinks. Lakels has come in. He goes on the Burrow Strike and Tree Protector. He falls very quickly. Nature's Prophet trying to man up on him, but can't stand the damage. In the meantime, the backside. TNK finding some Fort Spirits. Yeah. Not That's really liking worst. what happens. It's so funny um, when you're playing uh, Exhort Invoker and you just kind of send your Fort Spirits to push I, out a lane. I hate playing support against Exhort Invoker. And one of the supports just tries to fight them, and then you accidentally get a kill. And you just, you just lose, and you're like, well, <laughs> I'm really sad, because I'm now dead. Oh, oh man, god. that hero hates Ford Spirits. No, if he gets um, level 3 Necro in Ford Spirits, you're like, oh god, please, don't kill me. Heads up play so, from Boom so, Bell. He so, knew he had to go back to base, but stayed in the trees over here, so that he didn't get hit by the AA Ice Blast, yeah. and managed to avoid it. 
and they have to be conscious of that basically this entire game every time they go back to base, which is something I know I always forget, but we'll see if uh, any of them slips up in their concentration. And All I remember is that time that you were playing Lena and you were going to die from Gale, but you oh, TP'd right... Stomp onto... yep, they'll get him. They're going to be able to get him. Overgrowth is going to be stopping in this path, though, Blue Bell, you're going to die to two ultimates. Jesus, the ultimate price? But never mind, Nathan's Prophets come in, as well as KYT and Abba. They're gonna be- that's so much damage, but the Sunstrike, it just kill him off. Searing Chains doesn't latch, doesn't matter, right clicks are enough. And now Nature's Guys is considering using it, and he will be able to use that to escape, and... Jesse did not anticipate that damage coming in when he TP'd to that location, and he just got <laughs> blown up immediately. And like, I don't know, they tried to Sunstrike that Centaur, he just blinked out of the spot he was trapped in, because Sprout's not a very good stun, because it's not a stun, it's just... <laughs> it's just trees. trees? It's literally trees, so... Yeah, it didn't really work out the way they wanted it to, but Clink's gonna go and push this tier one top. Top's a strafe, but Radiant go forced out, and don't think he'll be able to get this Ice Blast flying in and a Curse. Oh, they're gonna put Curse Gonna be able to get him. So Sunstrike. Take that fact. Okay, what? Well, that bash. My, 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 that bash. Skill. Skill plays. So strong. But, uh, oh, well, yeah, so it looks they like they're gonna transition to the push. Down. They actually don't have any towers. It's actually there are no towers down in the game just yet. <laughs> we saw a few games yesterday where almost every tower was down by this time the game was over. But it looks like there will be Boom Bell, TNK, and KYP. Gonna be moving up towards the top lane to try to deter this and they will be able to. Also wanna comment on Invoker's choice to go boots travel. Very powerful on Exhort Invoker. Uh, this is usually the build that I like to go for. Is for Midas, for Staff, Boots, Travel. You have all the positioning. You don't get a whole lot of speed because you have almost no points in Wex and the repositioning as well. Helps the global strat with some strat. Holds up ADDA and, and, and he'll yeah. go down easily. And this mid tier one should fall as well with the. Oh, Cliff popped as well. So, Four Spirits smacking away at the tower, catapult as well. I feel like they can walk up and finish this, and Jay's gonna try and get the last hit, I think. Yeah, he will. So. Dyer's middle tower gonna be able to do that. Yeah, first tower of the game. Yep, and Oa, he was uh, pinging out that Dyer's there was rotation coming from the jungle, so I'm not going to catch anyone off guard. They're going to go ahead and back off, and this is good. The team with that I certainly would favor in the late game is, I mean, the, they have three minuses. They have a faceless void who I think is one of the best late game carries. Uh, they get the first two towers in the game, almost back to back, and I believe Invoker oh. got both last hits. Uh, once again, faceless void going down top, getting caught out by a blink stomp from uh, the centaur, followed up by... An Orchid Silence from Clinks, and pretty easy attack. kill, and... Well, Faceless Void's picked up an Ogre Club. Um, I reckon that's for an Ags and not a BKB. It could be a BKB. He's been getting killed off a lot as Invoker... I guess you could go for BKB Sunstrike. instead of Mantis Style. I, it also helps against all the bursts from the Centaur, Sand King, and the Lich as well. You can't get yeah. Searing Chain yet. Yeah, it's probably a BKB. Yeah, I, that's a, well, he'll be delaying his damage a little bit, but he's got enough follow-up and burst around him that he doesn't necessarily need to go for the damage first, but, I don't know, I'm hoping it's, I don't know, if you go Ags, I really like getting a damage item before finishing an Ags, I'm kind of hoping it's not that, but, it could be. I, think, I don't think he needs a damage item, because he has his team to do the burst in Chronosphere. Yeah, just like this. Speaking, yeah, speaking of which, down in bottom lane, easy, easy yeah. game, easy life. So, Invoker is actually going to be going in for a Lincoln Sphere. So, this makes Klinks' life very hard, because the only thing that he will have to pop that Lincoln Sphere will be his Orchid, which, then if Invoker is an Orchid, he just turns around and kills the Klinks. And also, I like a Lincoln's pickup more than a BKB on Invoker. I think the only time you really need to go for BKB is probably against a Pugna. Mm -hmm. So, pretty smart pickup. He's going to be going that before a Scythe of Ice or a Necrobook. But, man, this Invoker is fed. Yeah, he got the two tower last hits, as well as all the kills that he's had so far. He's 6-2-2. Two, two. Uh, he is the kill leader in this game, so... He's he's looking pretty strong right now, as we see uh, Mythrust gathering up to try and push top lane. It's going to be pretty difficult. They've had the Clinks here trying to do the chip damage, but Living Armor is such a damn good spell. And the Ice Blast as well for the anti-push. Going to be doing a lot. Forge Spirits again. Going to be really difficult to get map control. Fortunately, they are dire, so it's not like they suffer as much from not having any tier 1 towers as a team on Radiant usually does when the other team has their tier 1 towers up just because of the Roshan advantage but they definitely do need to start grouping up and trying to get some of these towers because they need that money to get items for the Ember Spirit as well as the Clinks. 
Mineski has three Midases. I mean, they need to try and get some towers before these Midases kick into full gear. I mean, you could say that Jesse, I mean, sorry, that Jay's Invoker is already past that point to an extent. Like, his Midases already served its time, but, uh, Jesse Vash still needs to get that Necro Bone. Stampede is going to be used. They're going to be diving down. Blink in from Sand King. They're going to be able to secure a kill on Invoker with that. And they should be able to get this tower. Yeah, I don't see... Oh, uh, Clink's out of DD, that's why. DD Clink's is really good. So they do finally have they get it. Up tree in, but I don't know. There's really... There's no glyph, so I don't think they can really defend this. Well, split push is strong. And I think that Invoker actually might not go for a Necronomicon of his own, as Jesse Vash is going to be going for one. So he mm -hmm. can go ahead and build something like damage, and it looks like it will. We will be seeing blinks from the Kells. Now, um, I think this is. I think this is fine. I, I like getting the Orchid before it, um, and getting it now is perfectly fine. So, well, now he can pretty much solo kill anyone, maybe except Void, because he can keep up with them. Let's see what he's going to be able to do with the Tree Protector. There's the Orchid coming in, and see, there's the blink. Dust is going to be used now. He's on the tower. He's trapped by creeps. Scumbag oh, wow. creeps. Get out of the way. Overgrowth, Overgrowth is going to be used. Well. He's taking a lot of tower shots. And he leech seed. Oh. Uh, yeah, and Jesse Vash nice able to come in and finish this kill. Ice Blast is nice. on the way as well. Really nicely done by, uh, by the tree ant there to uh, be the Juke Lord. Hey, Eric, I'm curious about this. What is the win rate of Faceless Void with Ancient Apparition? Just maybe in a, the past couple of patches because it's been doing work. And also, if you, if you can find it, with Invoker as well. I'd be pretty interested to see that because anyone they're so finding on the map is just dead. They gonna maybe go for a Chrono here bottom. They are. There is a lot of heroes. Uh, oh, they actually, he airballed the Chrono. Nice reactions by uh, by KYT there. Get himself out of dodge. Get himself out of dodge. That quick blink, really good. That double tap probably. Well, looks like they're gonna try to reinitiate Boom Bell here. He does have at the center. Wow. Never mind, if, if you just commit like three ultimates to one hero, that's going to be fine too. It was pretty greedy of him to be there though. Yeah, it certainly was. And well, Jesse's not about taking that fight right now. He's going to go split push top of his Necronomicon, and he should be able to get this tower. Dyer's top I don't tower see Mithras reacting in time to save this tier one, and especially with the Necro Creep whacking away at it now. Can you death pack Necro off. Creeps? I know that I, you can't use Helm of the Dominator on them. I would reckon attack. not, but I'm not Dyer's sure. Because yeah, that, that's good anti-push as well. Yeah, so it certainly is if it does work. I, I can't say... Fallen. I would expect it doesn't Radiant's work, but I do not know for sure. Is under BKB is now done for Faceless Void, so now anytime he gets Orchid or anything like that, he can just BKB it off. And even if it gets down to a 4 second BKB pretty early on in this game, I think that's really all he needs. Because there's just so much burst coming out from Mythtress that if you just survive that in four seconds, I think it should be fine. But. Yep, and Geo did go down to the Clinks during that, and I mean, this Treant's gonna have a pretty sad time now that this uh, Orchid is up. He did manage to avoid it in the top lane, but when he's not next to pretty convenient juking spots in a tower to reinforce from the first teammates, he will be in a bit more of a sticky situation if he gets Orchided up. Feel free to interrupt me, by the way, if I'm saying something stupid and there's a fight going on. Oh, I mean, it's just a Clink's killing a guy. There wasn't really that much more to say, so... <laughs> Clink's does happens, kill guys. It happens sometimes. Oh, they're actually gonna go off on, uh... ASX. He does manage to get the PKB off, and a Chrono to follow up. I'm just gonna continue to go off, but Boom Bell, will he actually be able to get this? No, he will not, and now he's the time walk out, so... 10 second BKB down, maybe gonna chase down Clink's, but nope, not gonna happen. He will pick off the AA, so... The important Chrono, thing, yeah. as well, with the blink dagger from the Kells is that they're finally getting map control against this team which now is allowing space for invoker and nature's profit to be split pushing top it's going to be buying them more space to farm and take roshan and actually deafening blast and meteor are going to be used but completely airballed with the steering chain is going to miss as well and he's going to be able to ghost walk away they don't have any detection they certainly do not necronomicon warrior chasing away abba he's like oh god please this is better than a hero stupid item but, uh, yeah, Jay will make his way out after taking down that tower, um, so... Nice little find from him. That Exhort Invoker with an Economicon creeps to help him out. Man, he does a lot of damage to towers. It's a little dirty. Well, biggest pickup now. Uh, Tree and Protector has been the five position, been buying almost all the wards. Now Ancient Apparition has managed to finish the Adam and Scepter. Throwing an ulti towards the well... He actually manages to land it on the Ember Spirit, so... Abba just gonna have to go back to base, and... I don't know why he's... Oh, he's juking a Sunstrike, that's why. God, Team Global, that's so hard to deal with. It's so annoying. It's, it's so, so annoying to play against. 
So. But yeah, so he'll make his way back and heal up, so he's not doing too bad. Ooh, blink on tree, so I'm gonna see some nasty blink overgrowths. The dream is... The All dream the items are really coming online here for Mineski. Their Midas's are paying off. Uh, Nature's Prophet has his Necronomicon. He's gonna be able to oh start... Oh my god, Jay, you, you brave son of a bitch. Is he still doing Roche? He's just Roaching in the middle of, like, there's, like, five heroes in a circle around him. I think he can get it. I think he needs to hope they don't check Roche. They... Um, they don't even have wards. Courier manages to get picked off in the meantime, but I'm just. Links. I mean, Clint. Well, he, go, he, go, he did ghost walk in there. Um, he's dude, taking you, a lot of damage. Dude, you can't do this. Until he needs to hope that they don't find him. I think maybe he's just walking right on I, by. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh my god. They're gonna get experience from being oh, near. Jesse Vash is gonna come and help. He's like, oh, I got you, bro. We, we die together. They're gonna get this. This is so funny. They're gonna feel so stupid. They're like, we're farming our ancients right now. Boombell's like, I'm gonna get a kill, but never mind, they secure the Roshan, and Invoker manages to pick it up. Space created. This is, uh, this is a good time to fight, uh, if you're Mineski. Necronomicon and a Force Spirit chair and chase down TNK, uh, but not quite gonna get it, but ABBA and uh, Boombell in a bit of a tricky predicament. Boombell gets leech heated, dust it up. He's not gonna be long for this world, though. Unless he manages to TP no overgrowth, force to pop. To secure the kill, though. Faceless Void manages to get the last hit on that, and pretty important for him. He is falling a bit behind on farm, but the might is certainly paying off. Yeah, so he, he, he's I, behind in his team, but Lakels is really the only one keeping up right now. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, like the the net worth really falls off after Faceless Void. Uh, the Centaur really not going to do a whole lot. Um, his money, having money on him is nice, makes him hard to kill, but it's not going to help you do a ton of damage, whereas Ember Spirit needs to find some cash, but instead he's getting uh, gone on by, by Jay. But not going to quite go down, and it looks like Invoker's almost got a Nag him's ready, and whereas Ember Spirit's just trying to get anything, really. He has his Mithril Hammer in his inventory, phase and drums, and that's about it. I mean, he's, he's got a magic stick. That, that, that's expensive. Dude, wand. Wand. Lakelz was spotted out. Farming the enemy jungle. He's under the, he, he has a haste rune though. So yes, he may or may not be really, really fast. He's I fast. So Invoker going for the Agnum Scepter I really like. Just because you can do so much damage in a team fight, especially when your spells are all maxed for damage when you go for the max exort. Even Meteor Deafening Blast, uh, EMP starts to do a bit of damage, not to mention the tornado. Uh, drop damage is really good. Lots of heroes are gonna have a hard time dealing with that. And there are no BKBs coming up anytime soon on the side of Myth Trust. In fact, uh, Boombell has gone for a Ghost Scepter, so he's going to be even more vulnerable to this. And I think Centaur is the one that's the least susceptible to that, just because he's gone for a Pipe of Insight, but still. Going to be a this lot ghost, of damage. This Ghost Scepter on Boombell feels really, like, I don't... I don't really know, because like, if he gets caught out by a Chrono, I mean, he's just going to get killed anyway. But, like, there's so much magic first, I don't know if it's really going to help to have that. I don't know. I guess it helps against Necro Creeps and Fork Spirits. You just want to fight those summons, I guess. I guess so. There's going to be a Leech Seed on the Lakels and the Sunstrike to follow up. Is Jesse Vash going to TP in? He actually sprouts his friend. And Stampede going to be used. And is he going to go down? No. He's going to try to juke the Ice Blast. Faces Wood coming in. He's going to land a hit. Is he going to commit the Chrono? No, the Tornado's drop's going to kill him. He was dusted up. I was thinking he might Chrono to try to reveal him. But I didn't realize he was dusted already. So good. That's, That's a... That's a gall black play right there. Whenever he gets a blink, he just creeps around with nature's guys all the time. Speaking of which, I guess he, he's going to be committing the Chronosphere. He's going to be going on Boombo right Over, away. There's no as well. Uh, right. Sunstrike there. He manages to get him down with a couple of lucky bashes, though, but Abba going to be able to clean up the Ancient Emperor in the meantime. And the Chain Frost is committed, but Time Walk going to be out of there. Living Armor going to buy him a lot of space and time. In the meantime, Invoker going to be coming up. He's be traveled there. He's going to be using the Meteor Blast Defenor. Eh, Jesus Christ. He's going to be using spells with the BKB coming out from Abba. <laughs> going to be buying him some space. He lays a remnant there so that he can come right back in the fight after going back to base. But no, Jay's going to be still chasing him. He has a Cold Snap available. He's got the Forge Spirits as well. He actually decides to invoke Tornado but forgets that it's on cooldown. And Abba's going to juke back to his now remnant. In the meantime, Jesse Bass is chasing in the top lane. But he really wants to scale. Now he remembers he has Cold Snap. Definitely Blast still on cooldown though. Is he going to have an ice wall? Maybe that can buy him some space. The tornado finally comes off a of cooldown, so he's going to be able to use that to buy him some space. Catches two, and Deathwing Blast still on cooldown again, but the Blink Overgrowth has now finally come off cooldown. KYT in a lot of trouble. Ice wall going to be buying him a lot of space there, and Boombell gets the epicenter, gets the Burrow Strike onto one,
but Invoker is so freaking tanky right now. He has a Deafening Blast again. He's got a Meteor if he wants it. Now he sees the Ghost Scepter is up, but he's not going to dive the base. Sunstrike barely misses. Yep, and well, Jay pretty much a one man wrecking crew for a while. Raquel is uh, going to be going for him. Ghost Walk going to be used. They don't have dust. Oh, now they do. It does reveal Invoker, but the Lincoln's just popped. The Orchid's going to be going there, and Lakel's going to be able to finish off Invoker, but the Chronosphere in the meantime oh, catches just... almost everyone. He only catches so much damage and is able to retreat out of there. He's getting close to out of mana. His BKB, he switched to Int Treads for that reason. And Ice Blast is going to be just thrown in it by the AA from distance from the Secret Shop with that Agnum Scepter. And what a crazy fight. And the Sunstrike oh, sun managed to secure him right before the well. Crazy play here. Absolute. Minetsky is just playing out of their minds, man. Yeah. They're, they're looking pretty good. Uh, the Rax will be the next thing on their list. They did lose the Aegis in that fight, so they may wait till the next Roshan and maybe try and break high ground, but I don't know. The next couple items will also help as well. Faceless Void, like, there's situations, I mean, we said before, the Aghanims is a decent pickup here with no damage because he has a lot of follow-up from his team, but there will be times when your team's follow-up may not be ready for the Chronosphere, and having Dyer's your own damage certainly helps out quite a bit as just the Necro, I'm sorry, the uh, just Invoker Four Spirits just take top tower by themselves with a Catapult, so that's uh, that's something. But uh, having some o having some of your own damage in case this point is certainly really nice with the attack speed that he has, so I'd like to see him go for like a Maelstrom or something like that. Wow, 67% win rate. Really good. Speaking of which, Nate's Prophet, he's going to be part of that. He's going to go down. No, Living Armor buys him time, but he takes out to the Orchid damage. Yeah, we have a there's dead list on our clinks now. His damage potential on a single target's absolutely ridiculous, but Do you think he goes full damage here or do you think he goes for a BKB? I think I think he might want to get a BKB this game. Um he certainly has the damage right now to compete. I don't know if he I don't know. Because the thing Some is survivability would be good, I think. Oh but, like really BKB saves you just from what? Invoker? Certainly helps. Um Invoker, Wrath of Nature, Ice Blast. I don't know. I guess you don't need I'm to thinking get one, like Chronosphere and Overgrowth all go through BKB. And if you get hit by Ice Blast before you BKB, you can't BKB that off. By the way, there's a smoke. Invoker are going to be coming on under the cover of Ghost Walk. They're going to be moving in. Chrono going to be used on ABBA, but Invoker's get caught in it. He pings it. And there's a stomp. Double Edge going to be used as well. And he gets bursted down. Pretty poor positioning there. A little bit unfortunate, but the BKB going to be used from ABBA. Gigabyte going to be... Oh my god. Face Floyd going to be using his, but Lakel's managed to get a double kill on the backside. He's going to TP out. Searing Chain's going to be catching, but the Chain Foss is going to actually interrupt the TP. ASX. He's trying to get away. Living Armor going to be buying him some space and time again. Nature's Guy is going to be there as well. And there's going to be a blink on the Centaur. Or on the Train Protector. Burrow Striker there as well. But Ford Spirits. And doing some damage. But it looks like the Train Protector should go down. He has a blink dagger in one second. No. He takes one tick of damage. And there's a Burrow Strike again. So they're ultimately able to get him. But Invokers come back. He's thrown out the Tornado. They're just not getting anything done during Corona's And career. Nature's Prophet is pushing top. Oh Team Rat. Killing Ranger Rex, but yeah, they... Got the Vokers are in trouble here. He... Yeah, he's, he's he popped a Sun Strike, I think. Well, Lincoln's was popped. Goodbye. Oh, no, he forces that himself. He gets the Ghost Walk off. Ah, uh, no, they see him. Is there a gem? Yeah, there's a gem on Centaur. Okay. I'm wondering how they were seeing him during that fight. Yeah, Lakel, you can see from this, like, Lakels doesn't really need more damage right now. He's doing an absolute crap ton as it is. I mean, he can he can certainly get more if he wants to, but, uh, man, just Chronosphere, nothing is, it's not, it's like not doing anything. I don't know what is really going on, but, like, they did, like, no damage to ABBA in that Chronosphere, and at the end of the day, it just achieved nothing, and then... The biggest thing was that Invoker was caught in the Chrono. Uh, yeah, mid lane, yes. Ice Blast's gonna fly. Gonna be hitting on three. Maybe they try to follow up with a sun strike here, but their whole team is there, so just gonna wait it out. The pipe on Centaur are gonna be helping as well. Middle tower is under attack. Oh wait, there's still a tier one tower Radiant in the mid lane because they have a freaking yep. tree. Yep. That'll go down in pretty short order, but um, yeah, they really need this invoker back to really offer any any kind of fight here. To be perfectly honest. But. Well, 35 minute mech comes out on Lich. So their team fight got a little bit better, I suppose. At least they're sustained, and they've been coming out ahead in these pretty long engagements. It's, I I didn't necessarily expect. I do suppose that Mineski has a lot of burst damage at the front, and if you can survive that, you can kind of just try to win the fight over time. 
And not if to mention, you, if you outlast Chronosphere, you're you're in decent shape. If you can get through Chronosphere without losing a hero, you're you're looking pretty good. Because that Faceless Void right now is just a glorified Chrono machine. He has a, actually he has a Maelstrom now, so things will start to get a lot better once he gets a Mjolnir. That that will help out the Chronosphere damage a lot because he's just. I mean, he has teammates to help, but he needs to do damage for himself. Like his Chronosphere now. But Kels does go for the BKB now, so he's going to drop his TP scroll and just rely on being fast and blinking to get himself around. So now, if he's gonna be a lot better in team fights, his position has been really good to begin with already. But now it's just gonna be really difficult to bring him down, and his burst damage is absolutely insane, especially when he has death pack. So they're gonna be moving up. We have Jay coming up. He oh, came into the cover of Ghost Walk, and there's gonna be a Chronosphere committed, but he catches Invoker again. But it doesn't matter. Ice Blast gonna be able to secure him down with the Rats of Nature. Boombo gonna be going. He takes damage from a Deafening Blast. Pipe's gonna be buying some time, but never mind. Very, very useful smoke gang so far as they get a triple kill off of that with Team Global. That was that was the best Chronosphere they've had in a long time, and it didn't even start out really as great as it could have. Like you said, the Invoker did walk into it, but catching the Clinks and the Chrono is that's the prize you're looking for, and they managed to catch him out farming. Nicely nicely done there, and well, they should get racks for their trouble. Uh Lakels does not have buybacks, so yeah, he sure doesn't. Invoker comes in, he throws out the Tornado, threw out the EMP as well, and uh, he did invoke himself a uh, Cold Snap. Gonna Alacrity himself to try and get a little bit more damage. And now this means that racks are gonna go down, and you're down two sets of racks against the Nature's Prophet. Good luck. Yeah, that was that was the Star Trek Candles back. Mineski had been in pretty good shape. They were just like having having trouble getting the fight to close it out. They had the gold lead that they needed to pretty much to win the game, but just gripped a couple of fights, but once they put it all together. Well, they got two lanes of racks, so... Well, I mean, it's still go three minuses. Go towards the third one. Looking at the, the net worth disparity between... I mean, Lakels is on the top, but he's the only one on his team. And if he gets caught in Chrono, then all, his team can't follow up. And that, that's yeah, just kind of one of the curses. It's almost like... I mean, Faceless Void isn't doomed, but he has that same feeling where if you draft one damage dealer or... They didn't draft one damage dealer, just Ember Spirit got shut down really hard because he landed against the next one invoker. Mm -hmm. uh, it just becomes incredibly difficult to take any fights whenever oh, that hero Oh, like Wombo. Down. Oh, Ice Plus going to hit. Ice is done. And, well, Myth does not want to fight right now after getting EMP, uh, EMP Ice Blasted, but we're going to try and find some things. As, uh, we see Sand King died in the Shatter. Nice Plink Overgrowth on three heroes. Going to try and save Jay, but not quite enough. Double kill. But, hey, once again, the, just the tick down damage gets him two kills. All in the meantime, ASXC is soloing Roche. Yeah. So, this should be the nail in the coffin. This should be Mega Creeps. I really don't see Myth Trust killing Void twice, especially if the fight lasts long enough and he'll have two Chronos. Yeah, should Chronos in Roche to secure it, just to make sure there's not a Clinks there because they didn't yeah. have any detection. I mean, hey, he's got Aghanims, why not? I mean, just pop it. I mean, Solid like Invoker's back for a shorter. Invoker takes longer to respawn than that Chrono does to come back online, so. Really, no reason not to use that uh, in that style. So, smart move there. But well, I'm interested. In, this is ahead. interesting that they're managing to do this without a scythe of ice on anyone. I guess Chronosphere is like a glorified scythe of ice, but uh, Chronosphere's really good. I was just I trying know. to. Th I was trying to think about what else Invoker would buy, so that I could think about, like comment on it, and then I realized it was nothing. Uh, Halbert is picked up though on Centaur, so he does have the disarm. I'm not exactly sure who you're scared of the right clicks of though. Um, I mean, Faceless Void and Chronos, you start getting scary with the Mjolnir, I guess, but Invoker's probably the guy you would go for. His damage is a bit more appreciable right now, but... Um, I guess I if you Halberd... Just... I guess if you Halberd him while he's in Chrono, he becomes kind of sad, but... Still, yeah, I... That's about it. I don't really see... It's not really going to change anything in these fights, I don't think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that I'm going to be pushed up, and... Oh, sorry, Nature's Prophet has a Scythe of Ice. I was like, I swear I saw one but um, he, he, he does was bringing the pigs for no reason. So I remember telling you that Force Staff is better than Shadow Blade on Nature's Prophet, and now people are doing it in pro games. What do you think about this? I think, well, it's... I don't know, it lets you help out people who aren't you in fights a lot, as opposed to Shadow Blade, which has limited... Especially when you're on the same team as a, as a bunch of heroes who have invis, so they're going to have a bunch of detection anyway. Shadow Blade's not that great. It's... I don't know. I think Force Staff is fine. I don't know... I'm not sold on it on Nature's Prophet. I mean, it does add a little bit of damage and some maneuverability. It is a squishy hero, so if you get gone on, if you get a hero like a Clinks, who's trying to bring you down really fast, you can't just TP out or else you just get wrecked. But a Force Staff gives you a chance 
to get out. You can like try and scythe by someone and then force stack yourself away and make it out in time with your face nudes. So I think in this game it's a good choice. Fair enough, good choice. Uh, Invoker does pick up an Ultimate Orb, so it looks like he'll either be going for an Eye of Scotty, or he's going to be picking up his own Scythe of Ice, which... Invoker, one of those heroes, uh, kind of like Windrunner, where if you buy disable items with it, you build damage as well. But, Stampede going to be used, and he immediately force has himself away, has the Meteor Deafening Blast Tornado combo. Courier in the midst, probably going to go down, but in the meantime, in the back of the fight, Tree, under the cover of Nature's Guys, and just to blink away, he was spotted by the gem. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet is split pushing, and we have Faceless Void out in the fight, and imagine to get no one there. Very incredible reflexes there from Jay. Yep, and man, I think someone pointed out in the Twitch chat last game, uh, uh, yesterday actually, that BKB, that's what Rascal would call a game-losing item on Ever Spirit, I think, because you really need to get damage on this hero, and um, BKB, I mean, what does it save you from against this team? Like you said, Overgrowth. Corona Spear doesn't really do a whole lot, and on Ember Spirit, you really can't afford attack. to delay damage, I think. So, you know that you're in a desperate spot when your ranged hero has to start building an Abyssal Blade because you have no disable that goes through BKB, and he's the only one that's going to get the money for that. So, Lakel does pick up a Skull Basher. This is not going to be finished. He's going to be going for the Abyssal because the active effect obviously doesn't matter if you're ranged or melee. So, with his attack speed, though, he can get some ranged bashers in the fights, which can be nice, but. It's, I think this is more of a sign of desperation than anything else. That he's going for an Abyssal Blade instead of something like a Monkey King Bar. Yeah. I don't know what Maneski's really waiting for. Um, they have this Aegis, and they have everything ready to go. They probably could just go finish this game whenever they want to, but... Well, they finished the Scythe of Ice on Invoker. Uh, Faceless Void's sitting at 4.5k gold. If he sells his Midas, he can buy a Butterfly. But he probably doesn't want to do that if he's just level 21. I think I would at this point. I think you farm quickly enough anyway. Uh, and if you get that butterfly in the next fight, no one has an MKB, so you have backtrack and evasion. You're pretty much impossible to Dyer's kill. Bottom tower um, is under attack. Oh, he's, he's got a Ghost Scepter and a lot of gold. He's probably just going to buy Boots Trout. He doesn't really need anything else. And Tree and Protector doesn't really need anything else either. He's bringing himself out some wards. And Nate's Prophet not really close to an item either. So yeah, I don't know what they're waiting for. Uh, especially with Invoker, who just picked up his own Scythe of Ice. I think I think it might be go time now. They're starting to work right towards that top lane. Um, they do have that Aegis still on Faceless Void. He's he's starting to get towards a pretty jack status, so they should be able. To I got hit by an Ice Blast and a Sun Strike. He might actually shatter here. I'm not so sure. It's gonna last 17 seconds. Yeah, he's got Flame Guard and Pipe. Okay, he barely lives. Yeah. Oh. But now he has to go back to base, and that's been a really annoying thing about them trying to clear out these creeps. Is they just keep eating Ice Blast and then they have to go back to Fountain. And when they're in Fountain, Creeps are pushing in. Now they're just going to be sieging. Boombell gets caught in the trees though. Immediately killed by the Invoker Deafening Blast Meteor Death and Tornado combo. Lakels in the backside does manage to pick off Furion who instantly buys back. He's coming back to the fight. That ASXC, he's just fighting the Rax. He's under cover Lactree as well. Chainfrost is going to come in. Not very good bounces. And they're going to be looking for Lakels immediately in the Chronosphere. And this is what happens when you have a face of with an Agnum Scepter late in the game. Abba, he's coming in, but TNK, he's going to go down as well, and it's going to be a team wipe. Ember Spirit, probably going to die in the well, and GG is called as Mineski takes a very convincing game one. Yeah, the game is not quite as close as the kill score would suggest, and I mean, Mineski was able to push a lot of towers once they got their items going. The three Maestas came online, Myth just couldn't really find the towers, couldn't really take the map away from the farming heroes of Mineski, and well... They made the best of, best out of the fights that they could. The wombo combo was strong, and uh, yeah, they take a game one in pretty, like you said, pretty convincing fashion. Well, three minus is it? They do tend to pay off, so yes, they do. So uh, we're going to we're going to take a very quick break, everyone, and then we'll get very quickly into game two. Stay with us. <laughs> 